ever wonder why people are the way that they are? You ever wonder why people think the way that they think? Well, here's the answer to your questions. This is the sit down. <laughs> All right, welcome to another episode of the sit down here. We are with the extra. Super extra. How y'all doing? <laughs> Man, how you doing? I know this is day two for you too. Man. So uh, day one was, was, was nothing short of amazing. Yep. You know, we got a chance here to uh, see some of the extraness, some of the energy that we have to bring. And, uh, you know, it, it, to me, man, it, it, it was a fun day, man. How Most you definitely. about, about this, this, this whole thing? Um, really, I just, I'm blessed for the process that, that, you know, that we get to go through because I feel like a lot of artists that are independent artists, they don't really get the, get this. Do you get what I mean? Like, and not trying to play semantics or, you know, be that person, but you don't really get like all of this like industry right. or all it's like literally place. somebody just opened the opened the Mary Poppins bag and was like here you get this person you get this person right. you get this person you get this person and I really don't think that people understand like how epic that is man you, you accidentally bump into new opportunities up in yeah, here yeah you know exactly I mean? like, like seriously but and, um but all right, so what what do you do in your art, and uh, how long you been at it? All right, well, I my name of course is Super Extra. I am a recording artist. I've been um, professionally recording music for the last three years, but I've been doing music my entire life. I grew up playing the drums in church. Grew up playing the piano, the guitar, like reading music, being in vocal choir, going to vocal competitions, and then I just like. I don't know, something snapped and told me, yo, you need to you need to do this seriously. And when I started doing it seriously, you know, my whole life changed. So and I'm blessed to be where I am now, you know? Okay. Where are you from? I'm originally from Houston, Texas. So okay. I'm a Houston uh, native. I'm uh, a Houston native, yeah. Already, already. Okay, man. Um, so like I said, man, here at the sit down, you know, we kind of discuss uh, mental health and yeah. your experiences with it. Um, and uh, ways that you, what you do now, you know, a lot of artists, like a lot, they'll tell us what they do nowadays to keep themselves mentally tough because, you know, you say you've been doing it for three years. I can imagine that everything's been easy and everything's been yeah. great. So you have to be mentally tough to continue to do that. And, you know, I mean, and, and honestly, to live in, to, to, to live in your own truth, in if you want to say, like, really? if you want to be extra, if you want to not be, you still got to be comfortable with doing that. Yeah. So if you could take the time and, and discuss with us your experiences with mental health when you realized that it was a real thing and some of the things that you do to keep yourself mentally tough. I think that I realized that mental health was something that was real when I would find myself always not necessarily second guessing, but instead of being optimistic, it was very pessimistic. So I would think of the worst case scenario before even walking into the situation and Man. Once I realized that you got to stop kind of living yes. like that, like you can't yes. allow fear or allow, not necessarily fear, because I don't want to say that. Like I said, I'm a big person that likes to play semantics. So I understand that you can say something one way and then it might be misconstrued right. a, diff a different way. Right. So it's not fear, but it's more so when you understand the sense of self-sabotage, I can say it like that self-sabotage yes. um i believe when i when i realize instead of being optimistic you being pessimistic and that pessimistic thing that's going on is you self-sabotaging yourself right. then i had to take a step back from that self-sabotage era and a lot and of times we don't even know we're doing it exactly we're thinking that is reality or we're trying to convince ourselves that this is the truth yeah and and really that is yeah. and you living in your own secretly you put yourself in your own prison and you don't really know that but one thing that i can say that i'm blessed to do i've always been a creative so growing up i was involved in a bunch of music things but dance was always my first love too so now every week on Tuesdays, I go teach a therapy dance class nice. and it kind of keeps me out of my head like when it comes to performing and it just gets me like to push my students a different way. So you're offering a service, you know, dance therapy, but it's, you're also using it. Oh yeah, 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 for myself. Yeah, I use it for myself because it's art. So art evokes conversation. 
And when you're sitting down and you're talking about art and you're talking with artists, then you know like, okay, well, I'm using my voice, so I'm a vocal artist, but I can inspire a movement artist. I can inspire a visual artist just by having a conversation, you know? So to take myself out of rehearsal, 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 oh, this song has to be right, this song has to be right, just put me in a dance studio and let me and let me teach, you know. Let me let me like let me step out of that because sometimes you have to take yourself out of music to get inspired to come create more music. So let me ask you one more thing, because I, I have an education background, I'm a teacher, and I wanna ask you this, because you had you had spoken a little bit. When you're doing that dance class, is your therapy dancing or is it teaching other people? Um, oh well that's a good one. I would say I would say the teaching other people simply because I get to pull something out of them that I feel like that they don't that they don't see in themselves. I teach every age from kindergarten all the way up to college seniors. So yeah, it's not just like one group of right. one group of people. It's a whole diaspora of, of people. So I think that my therapy is me going in and giving back. Right. You know? See, and the thing is, that's that's what I found. You know, it's like anytime you come uh, approach a student or, or you have a student at any any age, if you can show them where they're successful. At, yeah. You know, because even those with with, with with behavior problems, even those with mental issues, if you simply show them where they are successful at, because all their life they've been told that you're not good at this or you're not you don't fit in over here. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you give them a way to be successful at at, at what they do, then you kind of see a whole different different side of them. Exactly, because we're the foundation that waters the seeds that we plant into the into the into the atmosphere, into anywhere we go. We're we're the people that inspire. So me being a musician, like you can hear my song and you might get angry, you might get happy, you might, you know be, what I mean because the music evoke a Oh, it'll, an it'll emotion, trigger something, you know? Something. And so if you have somebody that's in your life, because you, I know you've heard that phrase, always check on your strong friends. Always check on your strong friends. Always look out for your strong friends. And I used to be that strong friend that would always act like everything's okay, everything's good, nothing nothing bothers me, like it yeah. is what it is, this is my world, y'all just stepping into it, but that's not realistic. You get what I'm saying? Like if we're going to be real, if we're going to talk about mental health, that's not realistic. Right. You know, so you have to allow yourself to be okay with being vulnerable. Hmm. And I feel like once you let that out, then yeah, then everybody will love you. Did did you have to learn that personally? I I don't think that I had to learn it. I think I had to more so experience it. Like, because I feel like when you're learning something, somebody's teaching it to you. But if you're going through life and you're moving through life, you're not, you're not, so nobody's giving you the answer or telling you to break something down like this or do it like this or like that. You're finding it out yourself. And I feel like that's what I went through. So yes, I learned it, but it wasn't taught to taught me. To I had to experience it. Yeah, experience it. Yeah. Okay, okay cool. Well, man, this was definitely a powerful conversation, ready. It's Thank like yesterday so he brought the energy with Queen tomorrow, so he bringing it to me. So I definitely appreciate it. So, hey, but before you go, let's go ahead and let everyone know where they can find you, any upcoming projects, any shout-outs you want to give? Oh, I want to give a shout-out to the Loud Radio and Press Junket. Thank you so much for yes, having me. Yes, sir. Shout-out to Derek. Uh, like, I love you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for you to thank you to you for having me on your platform, man, and for having this conversation. I really, I really appreciate your art and I really appreciate the conversation. And you guys, you can follow me everywhere on every social media platform at Super Extra Two Underscores S U P A X T R A Underscore Underscore. And the music that I have out now is on every streaming platform. Just type in Super Extra, and you can find my catalog. And yeah, Super Extra, man, I appreciate it. So of course. Before you go, you have to be extra. Okay. And sign this board for me. Period. I can do it. I can do that.